Hello everybody and welcome to the Epic Flight Academy. My name is Mike Thompson and this is the Private Pilot Ground School course. Now, as you start to work your way toward the end of this course and you anticipate taking the FAA's Private Pilot Written Examination, we'd like to talk to you about some of the FAA test questions that you might encounter. Now, some of these questions can be a bit tricky or confusing. And no, it's not because the FAA is trying to trick anyone. Well, why are they confusing then, you might ask? Well, sometimes it's just because of the way in which the questions are written. Now, joining us today is someone that you already know, someone we've already worked with, and she's going to help us work through some of these confusing questions. And that's Captain Judy. Hey, welcome, Captain Judy. Great to be back, Mike. Great <laughs> to be back with you students. Hey, Captain Judy, I've come across a few FAA questions that some of our past students have found confusing because of the way that they're written. No. I know. What a surprise. Captain Judy, when a student comes across some of these, what's their best resource? They have two resources. Flight instructor, review these slides. You have the knowledge by the time you reach your FAA written. Just review the confusing ones, flight instructor, these slides. So that's good advice. Now, let's go over a few of these, shall we? It's a pleasure, total pleasure. Let's look at these confusing questions. It's really the words, the words they use because it's not pilots, not pilots doing these questions. So let's look at the first one. Altitude of 6,000 feet, controlled ascent. Mike, what the heck is controlled ascent? If you're not a scuba diver, controlled ascent's gonna confuse you. So the only two things in this question that you gotta know as a pilot, decompression sickness. Study decompression sickness. It's in these slides and your flight instructor will help you. Two things for decompression sickness. Altitude you're flying and the time you're required. If you're a pilot, nitrogen builds up in your body when you go closer to the core of the earth and this nitrogen when you start going up in altitude can explode. It can kill you. If it didn't kill you, it hurts. So it's very important. The altitude is 8,000 feet. What's the time, Mikey? Mm. If it's 8,000 and I'm at 6,000 feet, 12 hours? <laughs> oh, great job, Mikey. So now I'm above 8,000 feet. What's the time? Hmm. 24 hours. Yay, yay, Mike. Oh, I bet you passed your written. <laughs> Land and hold short operations. Lassos. It's not about cowboys. We're not lassoing doggies and cows. It's about land and hold short operations. The confusing part of this question, you got to review what a lasso is, is the word preclude. Word master of a famous book. Hey, here it is. Telling is not teaching by Mike Thompson. Find it at Amazon.com. Hey, thanks for that plug, Captain Judy. The word preclude means to exclude something by happening previously. Preclude. So now you know, just take preclude either, if you can't remember, just take it out of the answers, or if you can remember, plug in exclude. But this is even more confusing because now you look at A and B and C, you plug in exclude, and what the heck, Mike? I'll tell you what, Captain Judy, my flight instructor from years gone by, every flight instructor I've had since, every chief instructor I've ever talked to, every airline pilot and air traffic controller that I know has always told me a pilot can always go around. That is correct. That is very correct. Even when you're flying that great big heavy metal or a citation jet, go around. It's all safety. 
So the last example we have in detail is about crosswind compensating for crosswind. So as soon as a student sees crosswind, usually their mind goes to taxiing. Read the questions carefully. Read the questions carefully, and if you don't know a word, get rid of it. Don't get confused and hung up. So crossed wind, but this is straight and level cruising fight. If you read this question carefully, you know it's not taxing. So Mike, looking at these three questions, what's the right answer? Hmm. If I'm flying cross country with the crosswind, uh, I'm not supposed to hold rudder to yaw the airplane into the wind? Uh-uh. Oh, so I should be flying coordinated straight and level with a wind correction heading or a wind correction angle. Ah, so it looks like number two is going to do the job for us here, Captain Judy. That's correct, because number one and number <clears throat> three is you're on the taxiway or on the taxiway or in the air. And I'm not going to be holding flight control pressures for a wind correction angle in the air. I'm going to turn Correct. into the wind and establish that angle. Bad stuff. You're not coordinated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bad stuff. I want to be coordinated in flight. Yeah. Well, we've got a whole uh, bunch of other questions that are a little confusing. Let's go through those. <gasps> Isn't this like overwhelming? No, they're not that hard. All you have to do is go to Glime Unit 11, Glime Unit 9, Glime Unit 10. Review these questions carefully with your flight instructor or look at these slides or the videos. So, Mike, magnetic course. Yeah, so we see a couple here, uh, questions 25, 32, and 41 from Glime Unit 11. Remember, the magnetic course is the true course corrected for variation. Magnetic heading and compass heading talk about wind correction. So anytime we see the word heading in a question, it means we've corrected for the wind. So compass heading. Gosh darn, now we got all this confusing stuff. The key here is because we don't have time to really instruct you in this video. Ask your flight instructor, review these slides, you got the knowledge. If you don't understand the definition of these questions, you can't answer them. It's that easy. So what about question 42? It talks about time and route. Oh, that blew my brain. I'd look at all this math and not being really quick on math, I'd freeze. Don't freeze. It's simple math, isn't it, Mike? It's not that tough. It's time, it's speed, distance. Let me give you an example. If I was going 60 nautical miles per hour, so I've got a fairly slow airplane. Maybe I'm flying a Taylor Craft or a J3 Cub. How many nautical miles have I gone in one hour? 60. <laughs> there we go. It's that easy. <clears throat> So review these pages in the Glime, review these questions, you will be so prepared. Latitude and longitudes. Mike, did you realize other countries, sometimes they don't have satellites whirling over them, so all this technology and the citation or the heavy metal that you have, you're given latitude and longitude. GPS does no good. You gotta know how to do it in reality, just not to pass the success. Well, I never knew that. Yeah. Well, that's probably because I didn't fly around the world in a Cessna citation like somebody we know. Now, latitude and longitude can be confusing because we know longitude goes from north to south, and we know that latitude goes east to west parallel to the equator. The confusing part is we talk about latitude lines east or west of a zero latitude, and then students say, oh, but I thought longitude went north and south. Yes, longitude lines go north and south, but they're referenced east or west of a zero longitude. Those questions and the <clears throat> answers are actually kind of fun. It's yeah, they game. are. Yeah, yeah, a lot of fun. They really are. VORs. Oh my gosh, they're a lot of fun. Ruh, ruh. <laughs> yeah. VORs. VOR questions, it's the words. The toughest one is question eight. 
As soon as you prepare yourself with Unit 9, Unit 10, Unit 11, you will go into this FAA written so confident. Sometimes those VOR questions are confusing because they're talking about this idea of reverse sensing. Now, pilots refer to it as reverse sensing. The radio itself, of course, is still working just fine. I like to think of it this way. Think about the radio receiver inside the airplane that's receiving that VOR vortex signal. That radio receiver is not aware of the aircraft's heading. It's mm -mm. just aware of its position Can care from less. the VOR. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So where this gets confusing if pilots are flying to a station with a from indication or from a station with a to indication, we refer to that as reverse sensing. Well, the solution's simple. Turn the OBS so I'm going to the station with a to indication or from the station with a from indication. Also what confuses a student is that you usually start in technology GPS is whirling overhead. VOR is old navigation. It's a unit on the ground sending out an electronic beam. I learned on VORs. GPS wasn't around when I was learning. Me so I just visually envisioned a radio coming out. The airplane finds that radio if you do it right and you fly the radio. Well, that just about wraps up our review of some of these confusing FAA questions. Captain Judy, you want to join me on the traditional sign-off? My honor, Mike. All right, here we go. Okay. Well, everybody, we'll see you next time.